Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas and it's going to be yet another session in this lecture series on engineering mechanics. Well, today we're going to be taking up one more problem on dynamics. So if you want to go ahead and read the description, it's provided at the bottom of your screen. I would suggest all of you to pause the video right now, go through the description and then you can understand this arrangement in a much better way. Right. Assuming that you've read the question. So here we go. That's an inclined plane, angle is 20 degrees and you can see two blocks names A and B, both of them on this incline, initially separated by a distance of 5 meters. Alright, now these two blocks are going to experience some sort of friction also. Block A, as far as block A is concerned, this is going to be experiencing a friction or coefficient of friction of uh, 0 0.2. So because of this, there is going to be some sort of frictional force opposite to the motion so this is where the motion is going to happen opposite to the motion this way friction force for block a and for block b the frictional force will be along this direction uh, whose value can be calculated with the help of this coefficient of friction right now guys uh, <clears throat> listen to this very carefully what we need to do is when these two blocks are released simultaneously from the state of rest what will happen is that after a certain point in time okay let's say here they are going to collide okay there is going to be some sort of collision right and what we are supposed to find is the time taken by these two blocks when they or when the collision happens this is something which we need to calculate let's say collision of these two blocks happen here that means the time taken by block a will be equal to the time taken by block b so you can essentially write this as t a equals tb equals let's say t right second thing is in that process block a would have traveled a distance of s a and in that same process when these two blocks were released from the state of rest block b would have traveled a distance of s b five meters more than what block a has traveled so we can essentially form a relationship between the distances traveled by block b and block a so you can say sb is equal to five plus sa <coughs> sb is equal to sa plus five we can also write this as sb minus sa equals five and we're going to be using these two relationships in order to compute the amount of time taken when the collision happens after the state of rest and uh, we're going to be using and we this equation also for calculating the distance traveled you'll see that eventually but the first important thing is to calculate the accelerations individually of these two masses a and b so let's go ahead and do the motion analysis for block a so over here um, somewhere here let me draw it that's block a okay so this block A is going to have weight, obviously in the downward direction. Name of this block is A. So MA, its corresponding weight is going to be MA into G. So it's going to have two components. This way, this angle is equal to this angle of the incline, 20 degrees. So this is going to be equal to M A G running out of space, cos 20. And over here, we'll have the component along the plane m a g sine 20 so this block is traveling somewhere along this direction let's say with an acceleration of a a subscript of a when it <coughs> does some motion there is going to be some friction offered by the surface whose value is going to be this much let me go ahead and use a different color for the friction that's the friction force Let's say for block A, the friction is given by F A, small f A. Friction, you know very well, is a product of uh, coefficient of friction. Frictional force, in fact, is a product of coefficient of friction and the normal force, right? So the normal force will be perpendicular to the plane somewhere here. That's the normal. And let's say for block A, the normal is represented by N A. So <clears throat> I'll write the friction force over here. But just wait a second. First thing we have got to do, I'm going to draw it very small letters summation of all the forces in y direction is equal to zero so let me tell you this is y perpendicular to the plane normal to the plane and that's x right so when you do that you have na upwards 
एम ए जी कॉस्ट ट्वेंटी डाउनवर्ड सो एन ए माइनस एम ए जी कॉस ट्वेंटी इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू वर्क आउट एस एन ए इज इक्वल टू एम ए जी कॉस ट्वेंटी सो दैट्स द नॉर्मल फोर्स राइट एंड वी नो वेरी वेल दैट friction force is equal to product of this so you have mu a and a for f a so mu a is 0.2 na is how much that's uh, where have i written m a g cosine 20 m a g cos 20 so i'm going to write over here okay here that's f a M not M A but zero point two M A G and that's cos twenty, right? Now all the forces acting on this block uh, has been worked out. Let's go ahead and let's apply the summation of all the forces in x direction. That's the x direction along the plane is the product of mass and acceleration for block A, right? That's it. Now let's go ahead and work out the forces. So here we go. <clears throat> Where is the motion happening? This way. All right. The force dominating is this one. This has to be taken as positive, and all the forces opposite to this one will be taken in the negative sense. So we've got m a g sine twenty. M a g sine twenty. This will be taken in the negative sense. F a. So F a's value is zero point two m a g cos twenty. Zero point two. Let me put a bracket. 0.2 mag cos 20. Anything else is a product of mass, so we really don't have the value of mass. It's not needed, in fact. Ma times of acceleration a. So if you guys watch carefully, ma can be taken common from the LHS and RHS. We already have an ma, so both these uh, ma's will cancel out, and what remains is this. This acceleration a a will be ultimately equal to G sine twenty minus zero point two m a g cosine twenty. Ah, <sighs> again space issue. Let me drop this. All right. So you just need to put the value of g over here. That is nine point eight one. And once you do so, you are going to get the acceleration for block A. And let me tell you how much that acceleration works out as a a will be equal to. Now let me check. It's one point five one, one point five one meters per second square. So that's the acceleration with which this block A is going to travel down the plane. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's do the same motion analysis for block B. Block B. Here we go. So let's have an in. Let's have the block initially. Let's say that's the block. Right, that's the twenty degree incline, and what we're going to do is again, this is going to have its weight. In fact, is going to have two components. So that's m b g, and that's this is twenty degrees. So the cos component will be here, m b g cos twenty, and sine component will be here. mvg sin 20 this is the normal so let me use a different color for this that's the normal offered by this incline onto this block name of the block is b normal let's say is nb okay so <clears throat> let me write the first equation summation of all the forces in y direction is equal to 0 so guys if you watch carefully nb positive this mbg Cos twenty is negative. N B minus M B G cos twenty. Let me write it over here. N B minus M B G cos twenty is going to work out as zero. So N B can be written as positive M B G cos twenty. So let me write this. Okay. N B M B G cos twenty. 
that's it now the one force which i have left out is this friction now friction you know is a product of coefficient of friction friction force is a product of coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal reaction so in this case um it's not going to be a it's going to be b b b b and this is going to be 0 0.1 and this is not going to be a this is going to be b so that's uh, the value of frictional force so the frictional force will be somewhere along this direction that's the frictional force f b is equal to 0 0.2 let me write this uh, what 0 0.2 not 0 0.2 in fact it's 0 0.1 mbg cos 20 right so that's the amount of friction offered by this incline onto this block moving down the plane in the opposite sense okay let me rub off on all of this so here we go we're going to be applying this motion equation summation of all the forces acting along x that's x is equal to product of mass and acceleration for block b i'm going to write b and b that's it okay where is the motion happening here how much is the acceleration a b okay so which force is dominating obviously that force which is along the direction of motion this is the force this has to be taken as positive and the force is opposite to this force will be taken in the negative sense so we've got this mbg sine 20 mb g sine 20 minus 0 0.1 mbg cos 20 0 0.1 mb g cos 20 is equal to um, let me write this mbg somewhere else mbg uh, product of mass and acceleration so mass of block b and acceleration of block b okay so you can actually again do the same stuff mb take common mb okay from the lhs rhs also there is mb both of them are going to cancel out and finally the value of ab can be written as um g sine 20 minus 0 0.1 g cos 20 and if we put the value of g as 9.81 in this equation we are going to immediately get the value of acceleration for block b equal to let me check how much it is um that is going to work out as 2.43 meters per second square all okay done now i need some space what we are supposed to calculate is the amount of time taken okay from the state of rest to this collision some time uh, will be spent okay during this travel and that time is supposed to be calculated how to do that okay for that what we're going to do is we're going to use this equation now guys you must have gone through this equation s is equal to ut plus half of a t square now since initially both the blocks were at rest and since bodies at rest have, are having initial velocities as zero okay no nothing absolutely nothing so we are going to be using this and s can essentially be modified in this way s is equal to half of a t square especially when the body is released from the state of rest in that case u has to be taken as zero so we're going to be using this for block b and for block b so let me write this equation into some this sort of fashion so s b can be written as half of acceleration b t square minus again s a half of acceleration a t square is equal to what that's five so you just have to solve this equation and finally this equation will frame in terms of t and you can calculate it it's going to be that simple so what we can do is we can take t square as common t square over two what remains is a b and a, a inside the bracket the value of a b is this you're gonna to have to take this value for a b and this value for a a so a b is equal to 2.43 2.43 minus 1.51 if i'm not wrong yeah it's 1.51 and it's equal to 5 so this is going to be pretty simple you just solve this equation and the value of t finally works out as let me check how much this is this is a pretty easy calculation t is equal to 3.3 seconds 
3.3 seconds. That essentially means when these two blocks are released from the state of rest, after a span of 3.3 seconds, both of them will be somewhere here. Okay, this collision is going to happen. All right. So now we are interested in calculating the distance traveled individually by block A as well as block B, and that's also going to be very simple. So for block A, the distance travel is SA, that is half of A A T square. You just need to put the value of A A from here. I need to put the value of TT. What TT? It's T simply. Okay. That is the time taken from here and put the value and get the answer and it's going to work out as 8.22 meters approximately same stuff for b you've got to use the same formula half of a b t square and when you put the value of a b and t you're going to get the value as 13.22 meters approximately Okay, so guys, uh, that was all from my side for today. If you've got any doubt or query to write them down in the comment section below, I'll be very happy to answer them. And if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering mechanics, then do share and like this video, subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you get a notification, you get an update. And also tell your friends about this channel so that they can also benefit just like you are doing. Anyways, I'm going to be back with more such lectures on drawing and mechanics. Until then, it's a wrap. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care. Have a great day. Keep learning.